Hi, I'm Chris from Web Motor Works, and as some of you know, I came up with the first small block Chevy with an electric motor in it. And I put it in my grandfather's 1936 Hayes here. And as a lot of you are aware, um, electric motors are phenomenal. They have the immediate torque, so this thing burns the tires up like nothing. So the first prototype, we had so much interest in it, we decided to do a second prototype. Now the second prototype is going to be simpler to install into your hot rod. It has the batteries in the block. You don't need a transmission because we've got a gear reduction here. This is the electric motor at the back. So on a weekend, you can install this and it's everything included. It's all the computer programming has been done. The batteries have been set up at the factory, so simple, simple, simple. You know, I wasn't always into these electric motors, and I'd really like to explain to you how I started out and how I got to this point. So, you know, when I was a kid, I used to play in my grandfather's backyard, and he had all these old dump trucks, and this 36 Hayes was there, and I loved playing on this. And when I was 16, I got it, and I had a bunch of other cars. By the time I was 21, I had owned 52 cars and fixed them up and sell them, paint them. I was into the 67, 68 Camaros. When it came to doing my haze, I thought, man, I'd love to put a V12 in it. And I had read this article, Chip Foose, he put a V12 and a 32 Ford, and it's like, oh my God, that's gorgeous. I love it. Tried finding one. It had a cracked block looked into a little more, they got just over 100 horsepower, and I'm like, oh man, why doesn't somebody make a modern V12 flathead? Well, nobody does that. So I thought, well, I've got a small block Chevy, why don't I put a casing around it and make it look like a flathead? So I prototyped the V12, I had my small block Chevy, I had the shaft that ran the water pumps, uh, Edelbrock manifold, put my carbs on top, and so the V12 is all ready, and I thought, I'm going to make a V8 also. So I made a V8. You know, the funny thing is, I couldn't put the V8 in the MG because my MG has front mount. So I ended up putting the V12 in the MG and the V8 in the haze. So we had the two cars. I had the truck and the car. What do we do with these next? Let's showcase them at SEMA. So my daughter, Emily, and my daughter, Kelsey, and my wife, and a bunch of friends, we all took them down to SEMA and showcased them in the new product showcase. Everybody loved the product. It was just awesome. People couldn't believe it. We fooled a lot of people who couldn't believe this wasn't actually a flathead. We took the cars in the parade to see McKnighted doing burnouts the whole way in the truck and the car. Well, I'm not supposed to do that, but yeah, I don't follow the rules too much. Met a whole bunch of cool people there. We even met Chip Foose, and my daughters got him to sign the flathead V12 head for us, and we got to tell him how he inspired us. He even invited us to his shop there down in California, and uh, that reminds me. Uh, sorry, Chip, I guess I owe you a V12. I haven't had time to make it for you yet. So this motor is not a working motor. This is, isn't the one that was in the MG. This was actually a display we took to SEMA. And, you know, my batteries are underneath there for my haze, so I wanted something really cool to hide the batteries. So I thought, well, why don't I hollow out this casing? I got it anyways. Hollow out the old gas drum there, and... There's where the batteries are. But I want to show you how this setup works. So let's head over to the V8 and we'll show you that one. So this was the other display for SEMA that was in the new product showcase. And this was the actual motor that was in my 1936 Hayes. You can see the small block Chev underneath here. We've got a tri tricarb setup here. Uh, under here is the distributor-less ignition system. And then my manifold comes off. And you got a Needlebrock manifold underneath, and the water ties in through these heads. And at the front here, we've got the water pumps, the old 1949 water pumps that are functioning. And now, of course, these spark plugs and that, they're all fake because we have the spark plugs hidden underneath. And the exhaust system, I manufactured these. I got kind of a cool story on that. So we were rushing to get to SEMA, and I got Jim to cast up my two manifolds for me. And look what happened to this one, cast iron. He's like, I'm like, Jim, I need another manifold. We're heading to Seaman tomorrow. He's like, Chris, I don't have time to melt the, the metal for it. But he says, I can make it out of bronze for you. So on this side, we've actually got a bronze exhaust manifold. So I've got a lot of my pieces and stuff on my wall here, different heads, different patterns and that. 
and I'm going to show you the process here. This is the final head that's cast and I start out by making it out of wooden bondo. So this is actually made out of wooden bondo and painted and then I make a casting out of aluminum to make it stronger and then from this we end up with that one. And what happens is it shrinks a quarter inch a foot every time so each one has to be made bigger. It's kind of a cool process. Uh, I was going to show you this here. This is going to be an electric uh, flathead, but I want to show you something even cooler. Follow me. So this is my V12 in my MG, but guess what? I wasn't satisfied with that, so we had a big car show up here, so I decided to make a V16. So the front part's the same. That's the V12 with the shaft that runs the water pumps and that. The, these six carburetors are functioning, and then the last section of the motor is uh, actually a little bit of a faker, but I just had to put a V16 in this thing. And if you look, it's jacked up at the back. Well, the other day we were doing some burnouts in the driveway, and I snapped the axle. This axle was uh, a short 1956 Chevy rear end that was done in 1960 and this car used to drag race in the early 60s. It used to do 11.4 seconds, 11.3, something like that. So, and I've owned this car since I was 16 and I'm 62 so that's uh, 42 years or so. So I love all types of engines, gas engines, LS, small block, flathead V8, flathead V12s eight carburetors on a V16. My first uh, gas engine, I paid 10 cents for it. It was a little lawnmower motor. I was going to put it on my go-kart. I never could get it running. I never it didn't have the right shaft and whatever. But it, it was how I started. Gas engines I love. But you know, I'm slowly adapting and transitioning into the electric motors. They're really awesome. And I'm going to let uh, Emmy here. You okay with explaining? You know more about that stuff than me. Go for it, Emmy. Okay, so how... Dad got into creating electric engines and electric motors instead of these small block conversion kits was because I wanted an electric hot rod. And growing up, going to car shows with my dad, I always saw all these super cool cars. And when I was 16, I got my license. I wanted to drive a hot rod for myself, but it just didn't make sense. I didn't have any experience with working on gas motors. And as they're not reliable, if I was to conk out on the side of the highway, I'd be calling my father for help. And so. I knew, I knew it didn't make sense for me to have a hot rod, but I always wanted to drive a really cool car. And a couple years ago, I saw a shop in California who was doing conversion kits on older cars. Um, Volkswagen. Volkswagens. Yeah. And I thought, man, this would be a really great opportunity for me to be able to have my own hot rod. So I brought the idea up to my dad. Hey, let's work on a project together. We'll make me an electric hot rod. And at first, it was really hard for him to get into the idea of electric motors but after a little bit of research and discovering just how much power these engines have and and how the world is heading in this direction it really only made sense so for a lot of these people who are similar to my father and have had their cars for 40 plus years they don't want to trade these in and get electric vehicles instead however this invention of putting an electric motor inside of a small block Chevy or flathead kit allows them this whole generation of people who love hot rods and the nostalgia of these old engines it allows them to really meet the future and combine these two incredible things together not only is it cool and it's powerful but these engines are so much better for the environment we're cutting down on greenhouse gases governments all over the world are starting to promote the use of electric engines over gas engines they're doing it in such a way where they're offering incentives if you drive a brand new car off the lot will give you ten thousand dollars off the price right but the reality is that's not the most sustainable way to do this what we're doing in putting electric motors in old cars is the most sustainable way to do this. We're preserving history, we're using things that we have already built instead of manufacturing brand new cars. Millions of brand new cars are manufactured every day and there's so much history and these are, these are so fun, there's so much personality in these cars to be able to preserve their original engine appeal but put an electric motor in it and stay relevant and do our part in saving the environment at the same time, I think that's key. Yeah, thanks Emily, and you're right, you know, there are a lot of 
old timers out there with these old cars, old classic cars, and it, it does make them relevant and in coming into the 21st century. I hope you guys join me and watch what Emmy and I and my other daughters are playing around on. And, you know, I got lots of ideas, lots of projects in the go. You know, like Emily said, the small block Chevys and Cyber Beast with the batteries in it. You know, the ones where you're using the four speed, the flathead you know, V8, the flathead V12. My friend Todd from Canadian Electric Vehicle is like, geez, Chris, like narrow it down to a few, but it's like, I want to have all these options you know I want to have a Hemi for the Dodge guys I want to have a small block Ford and it's like why the hell can't I like I can have as many engines as I want I'm a grown man now right Emmy can't I debatable oh <laughs> but yeah no just and if you know if any of you guys got any ideas it's like hey I want to put one in my Volvo well you like Volvos not really my cup of tea but surprisingly I've had a lot of people wanting their Volvos done we can do that we can do a Model A engine, a little four-cylinder, and smaller, try to keep the price down, batteries in the gas tank, you know, and it'll still look like their stock Model T, Model A. Not too much horsepower, because then they can use their existing wooden wheels and rear ends, you know. It, it's unlimited. Vespa scooters. My other daughter, Kelsey, she keeps saying, Dad, I want a Vespa scooter. You know what? Yeah, guys are making Vespa scooters electric. They're from the 60s. They're unreliable as hell you know, some of them, but you know, they're old, but man, if they're electric, it's really cool. So yeah, give me your ideas. Let's go. I love it. <laughs>